Paul was just a little bit obsessive, you know. Depending on what we do with uh, uh, Acts 15, if we're just talking about taking text in a straightforward manner, scholars don't agree, as you know, Bob, whether Acts 15 is the same as Galatians 2. But for those who say it's different, and there's no difference here whether you're conservative or, or liberal, right. um, people just say whatever. But if, if Acts 15 is a separate account, Paul may have gone up to Jerusalem three times. Now, the subject's always the same, and everybody ends up agreeing when it comes to the more central things, and they disagree on outward-reaching things like fellowship and some other things. But on the gospel, they agree. I, I just think we have a guy here. This is precisely the guy we want to found the church. He's, he's obsessive. He's very careful. I mean, I picture Peter, uh, you know, if, if we believe the text, a fisherman and John, a fisherman and James, the brother of Jesus, who is he? Maybe a carpenter. And they see Paul coming up the street again for maybe the third time. And I can see Peter going, guys, here comes Paul, you know, the Old Testament guy. This, this guy just wears me out. Will one of the rest of you talk to him? No, you talk to him. You're the, you know, ah, here's Paul. What I mean is I, I see Paul as over the top on this one. I just see him as pushing, 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 and when everybody You're embellishing the text. This is a classic uh, midrash. Yeah. Uh, in the first, yeah, I'm good at it, huh? Yeah, uh, in the first uh, thing in Galatians 1, it, it gives no idea of what he may have discussed with Cephas and James. We don't know that he hammered out. I mean, he might have been talking about the weather for all we know. At least we can't say, well, he yeah. must have squared himself with them on uh, on, on the resurrection and the deity no, but, of Christ. We but, but just have no idea. The context, and, the context both before and after that visit is the gospel. Paul just says, the Lord gave it to me. He says, here's the gospel. And of course, you know this, but everybody else, that, that, that chapter division is not there in chapter 2. So just before that 35-ish A.D. trip, Paul's talking about the gospel. And as he begins just verses, minimal verses later, chapter 2, verse 1, he's doing the gospel again. So I think the old, the old hermeneutical rule, interpreted text in this context, if we say, what's he talking about? Secondly, if we say, what was Paul about? You know, I preach nothing but Christ and Him crucified. If we know that's Paul's central message, and the text before and after is the gospel, I think it's a pretty rudimentary conclusion that it must have at least come up in 15 days. Well, it may have. I, uh, somehow I'm getting, uh, my fault, no doubt, I'm getting lost uh, from the point I'm trying to make contrasting Galatians 1 with 1 Corinthians 15. Because if Paul was, received his gospel, which, as you say, must have contained the death and resurrection of Christ, right. uh, if he received that from Christ and is preaching it and then decides later to see what the guys in the home office say, but in 1 Corinthians 15 he says the gospel he preached in Corinth was the one he received from others, and That's he right. gives it, he stipulates it has to do with the death and resurrection of Christ. Right. I say we have a whopping contradiction. Why? Because if, if he didn't, uh, there's nothing about these niceties of, well, I received this, uh, this particular idiomatic way of saying it. That, that's right. just a gross harmonization. Why? No, I, I mean, second, uh, Galatians 2 comes after way... I mean, sorry, Galatians 2 comes way before, if we take traditional chronology, Galatians 2 comes before he goes to Corinth. Why can't he be preaching in Corinth what the Lord gave him, let's say it this way, what the Lord gave him as clarified formally by his primary disciples? Why couldn't it be that? Why couldn't Furnesh be right that the Lord gave it to him, but he heard this really nice formalized statement, which is where most It's a you have to read in. It says, Why? here's the gospel I preached to you, and, right. uh, and th th whether I or they, we all agree on it, this is not right. the same guy that's talking in, for, in Galatians. Why not? On, it, no matter which of these passages in Galatians you look at, it, it's just to say that, that he's uh, just spinning it a different way. There's no reason to say that. What's added on here that, that isn't in these numerous other statements throughout Romans and Galatians and so on? Uh, could I jump in here? Okay, Galatians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 11, whether it's I or they were preaching the same message. All right, let's compare that to Galatians 2, 6. They added nothing to me. Galatians 2, 9, and 10. They laid their hands on me, the right hand of fellowship, and told me to go out and preach it. Seems to me Galatians 2, 6, 9, and 10 are very close to 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 11, i.e., on the gospel, at least, they were all on the same page. 
But the thing is, it, he says he got it initially from no one. He went out to preach it. And, uh, right. and he was already known to be preaching it the first time he showed up in Jerusalem. Though most didn't see him, they heard he's preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. Right. He, so he's been preaching some gospel. And yet, we, in 1 Corinthians 15, if this is really Paul, we're, we, surely we're being told the saving truth he gave to the Corinthians he got from other people and if we identify that with any of these meetings in Galatians we just have two different accounts uh, he either got it as a revelation from Christ and no human intermediary or he was given it by these uh, these eyewitnesses supposedly but Bob, I'm, I'm asking what is wrong with Furnish's suggestion it's the Lord's harmonization it's like saying Peter denied Jesus six times oh wait a minute wait a minute Paul's the one who does the harmonization. No, he's not. I'm afraid that's your buddy, Furnish. Okay, no, no, listen, listen. We haven't mentioned this yet. In Galatians chapter 1, Paul says, I got it from the Lord. Next step. I didn't talk to anybody about it. I went up for three years. Very next verse, I went to Jerusalem to talk. So Paul's the one who says, God gave it to me. I discussed it with nobody. Whoops, I'm up in Jerusalem and I'm talking. What I mean is Paul's the one who says, got it? Didn't say anything. Later I said something. I take it since Paul's the one who tells us that, Paul thinks it's harmonizable. Well, no, my point is that Galatians is self-consistent. The, the howling contradiction is between anything in Galatians and 1 Corinthians 15. I, I, I don't understand why that's a, a contradiction, Bob. I, I look at, I've looked at a number of commentaries on the... Oh, they all do the same spinning. I looked at them, too. I just can't believe it. They feel they must harmonize. Uh, so many commentaries on the Pauline epistles are almost nothing but harmonizations, uh, even within the same letter. Gina, how the heck could, what could Paul have in mind to get from this verse to that verse? Well, I tend to think uh, nothing, because it's a patchwork quilt of fragments from various authors. Uh, and uh, they say, oh, no, 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 Paul must have written it come hell or high water. Yeah, there can't be any interpolations, it's all unitary authorship, and so somehow he must get from one to the other, and no matter what kind of gymnastics we have to do, we'll do them, and I, I just don't have the patience for that anymore, I just think that no, these things do not agree, and if it's the content at all, my point uh, remains, because he does say the gospel I preached is no gospel of man. Bob, I, I, you know, when we talk about this harmonizing thing in Galatians chapter 1, I, I, when Paul is the one, not evangelicals, not when Paul strings together one sixteen Galatians, then one seventeen, then one eighteen, then just a few verses later two one, Paul's the one who's who's putting this all in the narrative. And when Paul says, "I got it from the Lord," I didn't go anywhere. Don't think I ran up there and talked to the apostles. I'm an apostle on my own. You know, I, I got this from the Lord. Then. When, I, when my apprenticeship was over, as it were, now he doesn't say that, but what I mean is Paul does say, I talked to nobody. Then, then, two verses later, all right, time to talk to somebody. Seems to me that not, not now, but then, um, you know, you can't do a master's degree until you do a bachelor's degree. Seems to me Paul's got stages here, and, and I, nobody's inventing a harmonization. Paul himself says, I think we're putting too much on it when Paul says, I didn't talk to anybody. I got this from the Lord. If we were to be strict about this, he can never go see an apostle. He can never exchange views because he says, this from the Lord. I don't give a rip what you guys think. But no, I'm Paul, not trying to say that. I don't see any problem within Galatians. But then, okay, if there's no problem in Galatians, and Paul, I don't want to say it's a now you see me, now you don't, but Paul's saying clearly, I'm not going to talk to you now because my apprenticeship has begun. I, I, I'm alone with the Lord for three years. That, that I doubt, too, by the way. Why, why isn't that simply a reference to his preaching among the Nabataeans, which got something got King Aretas mad well, at Well, the only, the only problem with that is that it, we don't know what he was doing. He just said he was alone, he was alone with the Lord for three years. If we put events in there, we're actually, we're making things up. I mean, who, who, well, no, well, no, I'm just getting from, from Luke uh, and from, uh, from, uh, Whereas it Second Corinthians that he had some run-in with the king of the Nabataean Arabs. Yeah, and, I mean, uh, he, he, yeah, where, where, you know, where do we put it? But all I'm saying is, he said, I think Paul is driving a wedge between what he got from the Lord, so he doesn't have to be instructed of anybody, because the Lord Himself gave him the gospel, 
And now, after X amount of years, whatever else he was doing, if, and let's put it this way, if he was preaching during those first three years, I assume he was preaching the gospel to the outlines there in Galatians 1, and he got it from the Lord. But, but the point is, the only point I'm trying to make is, whatever he was doing during that first three years, he says, I didn't run up to get patted on the head and told I was being a good boy by those who were being apostles before me, because after all, I got this from the Lord. He called me specially. And then three years later, I'm going to go up there and see what they're about. And then again in Galatians 2, he does it again, and then depending on what you do with uh, Acts 15, it's either a second trip or a third trip. But my point is, there can hardly be a discrepancy between Paul saying what the Lord gave him and what he was instructed by others, because he himself does the one-two sequence and says they both come. So if he's, unless he's so dumb that he doesn't know two verses later that he just contradicted something he just said, I think he would plainly say, guys, guys, three years There's not a contradiction there. He says, I I got my preached message from the message I preached from the Lord, and I decided to set it before them to see what they would have to say, and they had no problem. I don't see a contradiction there. It's supposed I see a contradiction with any of that in 1 Corinthians 15, where he says he got his gospel that he preaches uh, from other people, and we're assuming it's one of these these visits to Jerusalem. I'm I'm saying it it cannot have been if if he uh, got it from the Lord, not from any human agency, and this idea that it was just a, a formal thing, like an apostle's creed, in effect, I, that just seems to me a desperate uh, reading. And why would he, you know, why introduce that in First Corinthians fifteen if, uh, if if the point simply is, you remember what I preached to you that Jesus rose from the dead? How can anybody doubt the future resurrection if you accepted that? That's that's a good point, but I think that's a real good point. But I think Paul being the student that he is, three times in 1 Corinthians, if we take the text straight forward, three times in 1 Corinthians, he tells the Corinthians, I gave you the tradition I was given. Three times. Now, Paul, being a good student, um, if we can accept what Acts says about Gamaliel and so on, he at least... I doubt we can, but... Okay. Uh... But well, I'm okay. But just a minute ago, you like you like Luke and Acts. So I mean, no, you know, I just said the only evidence we have at all about Arabia is, is sure. in there, and so we rather than. But you're not going to you're not going to interpret a primary source, Paul, by a secondary source, Luke, are you? No, I'm just saying with all the evidence we have, little though it is, uh, is preferable to saying, well, he must have had some kind of. Uh, Elijah or Moses retreat in the desert for three years. No, no text says that. Well, Paul himself says I was with the Lord for three years. That's all I'm talking about there. I don't know if he was preaching in Galatians. Him. Yeah, yeah, Galatians chapter one in Arabia. Yeah, because for three years he. Yeah, I went away into Arabia, and again I returned to Damascus. I, you know, I think he's usually taken to be saying there that the, the Lord. I was instructed by the Lord, not the apostles. I think he wants his readers to think. I don't know, is it a human thing? Is it not a human thing? I don't think he wants the, uh, the readers to think Paul is a derivative. Paul has a derivative message. Because that's why he takes great pains to say, I got it from Jesus. That's said, why he can't have written this thing in First Corinthians 15. Well, okay, if that's true, Bob, if, if, that, if it's that simple, why does he go up to Jerusalem in Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, and subject his gospel to them? Well, uh, because of the, if, if you tie, I'd have to admit, I do tie that in with Acts 15, I, and I okay. think that the going up by revelation uh, is intended as uh, a way, one of the prophets in the community must have said, look, the only way we're going to settle this thing between the circumcision party and you is to uh, have you go up to Jerusalem to hash it out. Yeah, well, uh, and, my, my point is this, why isn't the contra- contradiction that you see is so insolvable why doesn't that keep him? Why doesn't he say to the guy who gives him the revelation, Paul, the uh, Lord told me you need to go up to Jerusalem. No way. The Lord called me to be. What I mean is, why should he cave in at, at, in Galatians 2 if he hasn't caved in in Galatians 1? Seems to me at some point, 2-2, two, two, Galatians 2-2 two, two is very hard to get away from. Paul says, at face value, I went up there, basically set my gospel on the table and said, give it to me, guys. Is this the right thing or not? Mm-hmm. And they said in verse 6, they added nothing to me. Nine and ten, they said, go out, brother. You know, you're doing the same thing we are. Now, my question is, if, if it's the great discrepancy that you see it is, I cannot understand how Paul puts himself under their authority 
in 2-2. Oh, well, it's because he has to answer to a constituency. He's well, yeah, talking but, about a, an, an issue that's arisen within the community, well, fine, which is but, divided. 